Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This video tutorial I'm making to demonstrate what is how we can determine the activities are assigned with lag and lead time. So first we'll see what is lag or lead time. So lag is the positive or is the waiting time for an activity to start. There is two types, one is positive and one is negative. <laughs> positive waiting is called lag time and it means that the activity cannot start and if the activity can have to wait for a certain time till the finish of the predecessor activity to start. Similarly, lead is the time an activity can start before of, before the completion of an activity or after a start of activity. This, will, this depends on the amount of the lead time. So often when we are receiving the program from our subcontractor or supplier, we are checking the quality of the program or health of the program. So one of the quality is check or health matters to check is we have to check how many activities are assigned with lag or lead times. Normally in the general practice and internationally standard, it is not recommended to assign lag or lead in the activities. Why? What is the reason? The reason is that when we are updating the program and these activities which are assigned with lag or lead become uncritical, then this lead time will, will delay the project by the amount we make delay the start of the activity. So it means that a project can be finished earlier if we remove this lag. So in this case, and we, it is not, that's why it is not recommended to use lag time in the, uh, in the activities. And in the other way, another reason is that this lag and lead cannot be shown in the in the gra in the Gantt chart itself. So it is very difficult to determine which activities are assigned with the lag or lead times. So normally, when we are reviewing the program, it is not possible. It is very difficult to check all activity activities individually one by one to so see which activities are assigned with the lag or lead and normally our big project pro programs and complex projects having hundreds or thousands of activity so practically it is seems that uh, seems that it's not uh, feasible or time it is it is very time consuming to go each activity and check it that there is the, any the activity is linked with the lag or link and sometimes even you check it it is, uh, it is there is possibility of error human error that you miss the activity which is assigned with lag so we are trying to now we will see how, we, how can we determine the activities are linked uh, are assigned with the lag or lead time? So there are three methods we can use to see which activities are assigned with lag. So one of the method is that we show the successor details and predecessor details column in our layout, and then we go through all activities. So which activities are assigned with lag? So here you can see the lags uh, uh, act, which have activity have lags, and you can determine. So this also, this matter also, you have to go one by one all activities, and it's also a time consuming, and there are possible that you miss some activities which are assigned with a lag. And the other way is using the filter command. But, but, but the, in Primera P6, the filter is not that much powerful that you can easily separate the activities which are assigned with lag. But we try to find some way to determine the activities which are assigned with lag. But you have to be take it, uh, take care that all activities shown in the filter are correct. And it means that all activities are assigned with a lag. Uh, what is the reason? We'll see in a while. The third and the most reliable method is that we can use the reports. In Primera P6, when we are making a report, in the P6 reports filter, there is an option that we can put uh, any filter for the lags also. So it is very easy method and very accurate method and gives you very easy, uh, good, uh, accurate results. So now we will see this method one by one in little bit detail. Then we will go the practice in Primera P6 itself. So our first method is that we are going to show the columns of predecessor detail and successor details. So it's very easy and we go in view in the columns, you select columns. When you select column, we are going to select list. When you open the list option and you can select the activity of predecessor detail and successor detail and you show these activities in your layout and then you go through all activities one by one to see which activities are assigned with lag. Our second method is using the filter method. So filter method is that we are going we are going to view and then we open uh, our filter and then in the filter we assign we make the uh, condition as I show here when the filter dialog box is open you can add a filter or you can modify existing filter in the way that you will go and uh, modify the filter and you can say that act successor activity details contains D. So this D stands for the uh, unit of day time, unit uh, time duration, uh, having the unit of D. So all the accessory activities having the D 
means uh, if there is D means uh, so finish to start with 22 days or 33 days or one day. So all this D will be shown in the layout. So we'll see also it is in little bit detail in, the, in, in a while. The third method is that we are using the report option. As I said before, that this report option is the most accurate way and it gives you results very accurate and but it, uh, it, it, and it is not very time consuming also. So we just we go to report and we select new report. When we select a new report, <coughs> we are also going to select uh, subject area. In the subject area, we are going to select activity relationships. When we are going to select activity relationships, we have to modify two things here. Number one is the column. You, as you can see here, so first we select column. Once we use the column select, the other dialog box is open. Duration, general and multiple float path. Just go to general and from general uh, tab, you add the activity ID and name for the predecessor and similarly activity ID and name for success activities. Then we can add lag, critical activities and uh, driving here also. So after this, when we are uh, when we select the columns, we are going to filter. In the filter, we just as we are going to column now, same we go to filter. In the filter, uh, in Primera P6 report filter, the lag option is there. So here we select that lag is not equal to zero. Means anything or any activity have lag, having a lag greater than or less than zero. So it's, uh, now what we see here in, now we see practically in the P6 itself. So just to start now. Okay, so now we are going to open one program. Our program is open now. You can see here, this is it's not very big program, but here we have activity ID, activity name, duration, percentage complete, start and finish. Now here we add two columns for the predecessor detail and successor details. So we just go in the column bar and from here we go for list. Here you can go successor details and you go predecessor details. Okay, so you can see now successor and predecessor detail. Predecessor detail is not that much important, but successor is very important. Here you can see 20D means this activity is linked, finished to start with 20 days duration, means this activity have lag. Similarly, you have to go all activity one by one, but as you see that if you have hundreds of activity, and here you can see start to start 25 days. So this uh, is issue with this uh, activity that is time consuming. You have to go each activity one by one, and which is time time consuming. And even it is time consuming, there uh, possibility that uh, possibility of human error is there that you miss some activity which is critical for the future. So this is one of the method, but it's not very good. Uh, it's not very recommended. So let's see the another method which is using the filter. So we just go into filter command and we make and you can add new filter. I already assigned one filter which is uh, highlighting logs and just uh, modify this one and lag and we say successor detail contains D means this details contains D means here uh, in the successor detail as we see here is containing the activity IDs. So all IDs which is containing D will be shown here but as I show you this method is will not give you 100% results. I will show you why. Just see apply this fil filter here and apply. See all activities come with the lag but here you see finish to start 20 days okay accept it there's a lag then here you see finish to start 15 days okay you have you say 15 days but there's 155 days lag okay but here you can see here you can see that this activities are finished to start with no lags so the reason is that activity id here is containing this d so this d here uh, this also activity id and this activity success details also mentioning the activity, ID, uh, activity IDs. So these two columns are checking by the Pragora at the same time. So if it is not mentioned in the successor detail, but it is shown in the activity IDs, it will show in the layout. So that's why I still told you this, this method is not very accurate. And when you are trying to make this activity, so it is better to tell your contractor or supplier to not to use letter D of either small caps or uh, cap, uh, cap, caps lock in the activity IDs. If there's no D in the activity IDs, this method will work properly. So how it will do before using this activity, we have to go to user uh, preferences. So when you are using this activity for the filter uh, uh, option you have to make sure that you have to go edit and in the user preferences in the time units 
you should show here that user show duration label as D. So this D should be shown. So all the when there is a lag, it will show you one day, two days, or any days with D. So it will be shown in the in the, in our filter. So we have to make sure that uh, show duration label should be this checkbox should be selected before applying this uh, this command. So our third command is using the report command. So let's start the report command. Now we are going to uh, our third method, which is using the report method. And so far, it is the most reliable method to use with, for, to uh, highlight the activities with the lag. So first we remove our, uh, this filter of making all activities. Then we go reports. Okay, when you go to reports, you can uh, add new activity from either by click plus here or just click anywhere and just add new report from here. Then you have to select new report. After selecting new report, just select activity relationship dialog box with this option. Then you go here and then you have active relationship in the subject area. Then go next in the subject area. You have to select columns in the columns. You have to remove this all. I think better to remove all this and then go one by one all. We are going to general and we see predecessor ID, predecessor detail. Predecessor name. Similarly, so you go successor ID, successor name, successor details. Okay, then you are showing to say this activity is critical. It will show you yes or no. It will ask you oh, this activity is driving. It will show yes or no. And after this, you will show here and you put lag here. So it will give you the amount of lag assigned to that activity. After you selecting this one, then you go OK. Then you have to go to a filter option. In the filter option, you have to select uh, lag. Press just press L, it will come lag. It's not equal to zero. Means all activities which having the lag, all uh, plus or minus, it will show here. So after selecting this one, just go next. Here, I one thing I show you: forget just uh, group and sort. You can group and sort as you want, or if you don't want, just remove it. So I just keep it as it is. Hide if empty. Uh, okay, then we go next. Okay, click next. Then active relationship. I just make one, two, three, four as a reference. Okay, then we just move forward and run report. Before run the report, you can go next. If you want to save the report, you can save the report in any option. Uh, and I already have saved, so I'm not saving this one. If you want to save, just click save. And it will be easy for you to for the future use. No need to make report again and again. Just I run this report here. And I want it to Excel file. So I just select at, uh, HTML file. Okay, then just select OK. And then I go run. It will show you here. Okay, just, just select here. Okay, so here you can see that you have predecessor activity ID, then successor activity ID, and activity name. And details then it will show you it's critical or no, it's critical, no, it's driving, yes, and lag is 20 days. Similarly, you can see all activities here. So, here you can see that this is the report, this report we generated from the help of P6 report section reports option. And here you can see these activities this is our predecessor activities detail, and this is the success activities detail, and these are the option. Uh, activity ID name is uh, details. Then you finish start with 20 days. As critical, no is uh, driving. Yes, this activity you see this. This activity is all driving and having the lag. This is not. This is all driving. You can see and having 75 days lag and then 19 days lag. So in this way, you can determine the activities uh, lag and it is a good method to check the health of the your schedule a uh, schedule having too much six, uh, ex, uh, success, uh, excessive lags is not accepted is uh, then the health of the there's a big question mark for the health and the uh, and the accuracy of the program schedule and you can ask your supplier or subcontractor or if it's the program created by yourself you have to find some way to reduce this lag better way is that to re remove the lag and instead of lag you can put some activity uh, like for the waiting time for example if it's a procurement and and after you deliver it will take four months to so sometimes the engineer they put four months lag so instead of putting this four month lag you can put for uh, four months uh, duration 
the use is that in the future when you uh, place the order every time the form every um, after the placing the order the every time every week you update the time is redu reducing so in this case you can start the uh, uh, delivery time and every week you can keep on reducing but if you put it the lag and uh, then the this lag cannot be changed because it's a like a uh, baseline so the lag maybe can uh, the consultant or the client not allowing you to change anything the baseline so in this case it is not good and sometime if it is shown you the activity this activity keep uh, governing the project delay which is not the real case so it gives you the false impression for the project completion or the project delay so that's why the lags are not recommended by uh, as per the international uh, standards and you have to find some ways and uh, and find some ways to remove the this lag from the program and the better way is that uh, put some activity instead of this lag so i hope today's activity give you some new ideas to how to uh, highlight the activity lag and how can you uh, check the how many activities are assigned to lag or lead time and you see these three matters the more as we see the most important and reliable and less time consuming is the report method and i hope uh, i explained you properly and it will it will help you in future and if you like it please like share and subscribe my channel uh, unfortunately the most of my viewers are does not subscribe my channel so kindly subscribe my channel to support me and uh, and it will give me encouragement and more so, uh, more encouragement to make more videos helpful uh, video to help our fellow engineers so till that time thank you for time and please don't share forget to subscribe my channel and like my video till next time thank you for thank you very much for your time see you in the next video bye bye